guys, this is Joe from Analog Archive back with another video. The video today is going to be my finds for the month of November. Similar to October's vinyl finds, I uh, did not find a lot this month, but the things that I did find um, fit right into what I'm interested in. Last few weeks, I've also downsized my collection. I sold about 180 records to the Bob Shop in Rochester. Um, just kind of going through, uh, reevaluating records that I uh, bought just on an impulse, just kind of just to buy something to make a trip worthwhile. Um, and then there's some records that I bought at the time and I really enjoyed, but how my taste has changed, uh, maybe not be stuff that I'm interested in as much anymore and rather pass that on to others. And so um, kind of downsizing the collection, got rid of about almost 25% of my collection, so a little more manageable now. But uh, to get to the records themselves, went to the Bob Shop a few weeks ago, and uh, they started, or they're going to start in, uh, I think, soon, uh, going through some, like, posters and offering some, like, music memorabilia that they've gotten over the years. Uh, they've been doing shows at the Bop Shop since the late 80s. And there's been, especially when it comes to jazz, some of the biggest names in jazz have come through Rochester and come through the Bop Shop, um, just kind of the history of that. And there's some really killer posters. One of them that they found um, that the owner very nicely sold to me was this Peter Bratzman one. Uh, it was a show that was done in Buffalo around 2003, 2004. It was when uh, Peter Bratzman was with the Chicago Tentet. Um, great players, especially Mats Gustafson on the uh, saxophone. Great kind of back and forth between um, him and, and Peter Bratzman. But um, really, really happy to have found the poster um, as I kind of really have grown to love and kind of collect as much Peter Bratzman these last few months. It was awesome to add a poster to my kind of wall of music posters and kind of music related uh, stuff. So I um, was really happy to find that. There's uh, some other ones that I kind of have my eyes on that I'll show um, when I get them. But um, that was an awesome one to find. Again, thank you, Tom, for selling that to me. That was really, really a great one. But the records themselves, first one is, uh, this is, Carpaths by uh, Michelle Pills. It's on FMP. This is a reissue from uh, 2022 on the Cien Fuegos label. Um, this the great Austrian label that has, over the last four or five years, have put out a lot of the FMP titles dating back to the 70s, and I think even some of the ones kind of late 60s. I know like Machine Gun was was one that they did um, as well. So great affordable way if you do find them this one sounds phenomenal sound quality is amazing on this um great lineup to this as well michelle pills bass clarinet peter kowald bass paul levens on percussion uh paul levens worked with alex uh, von schlippenbach along with evan parker part of the schlippenbach trio in the kind of late 70s into the 80s i got some great records um that include uh, Paul Levins on percussion. Peter Kowald was really uh, one of the mainstay bassists on the FMP label in the kind of late 60s, but really the 70s into the 80s. Um, this one is from 1975. Uh, you've got an interesting kind of breakdown of the album because there are some tracks that feature all three players, so bass, clarinet, bass, and then the drums. But then you've got some tracks that just feature... Uh, Michelle Pills, bass clarinet, and then uh, uh, Peter Kowald on the bass. And then there's some tracks that just have Michelle Pills on it. So um, kind of an interesting one. Really great variation to the sounds, but this is an amazing album. If you do see it, really great cover to it as well. Um, it was a great one, so worth picking up if you do see it. Next one, uh, I've seen this one uh, shown here and there, but this is John Carter, Castles of Ghana. Great uh, kind of clarinet-led album by John Carter. This one swings between more like modern-type jazz, uh, along with there are a few tracks that have a uh, free approach, especially when um, John Carter solos on the clarinet. 
Um, I was excited to see this one in the bins in uh, Rochester at the Bob Shop. And uh, he's got, again, a nice mix of, um, it's it sounds, I mean, it's Castles of Ghana, so it's kind of an uh, homage to, uh, to Ghana, but at the same time, it's also got, almost seems like a, like a Middle Eastern type sound to it. Um, but this is a really cool one. Definitely, if you see it, um, worth picking up. This one's a little bit, that one's a little bit tougher to find, but um, it was really great to have seen that one. Next one is more recent find. This is Our Meanings and Our Feelings by um, Michelle, yeah, Michelle Porto, the uh, jazz saxophonist from France. This was originally from 1969. The original pressing of this is worth quite a few hundred dollars at least. Um, not a lot, really. I don't think there's anything available in the U.S. for this, but this is a uh, recent reissue from this year. Um, really great kind of cover to it. You've got that, the classic kind of, um, like fold over covers that you saw in a lot of the French releases dating back to like the fifties. Um, but this is a really, really high energy, free jazz, free improvisation album. Um, this is available on Amazon. Got this for $35, cheaper than Discogs. Um, so if you are interested in that, definitely worth streaming. This is also on YouTube, so you can kind of take a listen to it. Um, but if you like free jazz, free improvisation, this is, that's an absolutely killer one. Really happy to have grabbed that. Next one is Jimmy Jufri Free Fall. Uh, this is on Columbia from 1963. Jimmy Jufri started in the 50s. Uh, he might have even started earlier than that, but he started with a lot more of the kind of big band type players. And then as you got to like the mid 50s, he went out on his own. He was few albums on, I think, Capital was where he started and then um, worked his way to, to Columbia for this one. This one, uh, you've got Jimmy Jufri clarinet, Paul Blay on piano, and Steve Swallow on bass. So the album title, Free Fall, kind of suits what you hear on this. It's got that really nice weaving of free jazz along with some more like uh, kind of, I wouldn't say hard bop, but it's more of just like a um, kind of of the era type jazz, um, but Jimmy Ju Ju Jimmy Jufri does an amazing job um, just kind of weaving in in between the notes, really, uh, without a, without the drums, you don't really get that real, like, low type end, you don't get that percussive sound to it, um, and he really uses this opportunity to express the direction that he's kind of been influenced with, like Ornette Coleman, um, a lot of the guys that, that kind of started in the early 60s. Um, again, this is not a full, full blown free jazz, but you definitely are thrown off by the fact that this is on Columbia and you've got this free jazz element to it. So that's a really great one. Um, just really improvisation based. Um, and so really, really, that was a really killer one. Continue to find more Evan Parker. Um, this is the one I found this month. This is Monoceros. Evan Parker, this is on his album, or sorry, this is on his label, Incus. Um, I showed last month uh, Topography of the Lungs, which was the first album that was released on his label. Um, this one was from the later 70s, 1978. It just features Evan Parker on soprano sax, four tracks, um, kind of varying lengths, but also varying uh, kind of feelings to the track. So you get kind of a different feel to each track. Um, does a phenomenal job with filling the space. You don't really get that dead sound that you would get when you think of solo performance, especially in jazz. Um, this was really, really great. Um, and it really kind of captured and, and kept your attention, even though, again, it's just Evan Parker on the saxophone. So, Next one, uh, if you're a Coltrane person, you know this one, really. This is a very familiar one in jazz. Also very divisive, though. This is Ohm, John Coltrane. Uh, this is kind of as free as John Coltrane got, and that's the reason why it is so divisive, because when you think of Coltrane, especially Impulse, you think of those early releases, Coltrane, um, you know, like the self-titled Coltrane on Impulse, Africa Brass, even as you got into like the mid-60s, Crescent, uh, Love Supreme, obviously, this one's very out there. Um, you've got Pharaoh Sanders on the saxophone on here, but you've also got some of his classic quartet 
uh, McCoy Tyner's on here, Jimmy Garrison, and then Elvin Jones. So you've got that quartet um, and then just some other players that have uh, that he kind of worked with afterwards. Very free. Um, this is exactly where I'm at with my kind of free jazz listening. So I remember listening to this one probably a year or so ago as I was really enthralled and really trying to pick up as much Coltrane stuff as I could. And I could not listen to this. This was just too out there for me. But as my taste has evolved in the last, uh, I should say evolved, but it's changed in the last year or so. Uh, this one is definitely something that I enjoy. I know that's probably pretty controversial because, again, most people, if they had to rank the Coltrane albums, this one would probably be pretty low, if not the bottom of the list. So that's a really, really high energy one, though, um, really showing what Coltrane could do. So it's an awesome one. Uh, this one was right at the beginning of the month. This is uh, Black Bomb Bame and Peter Brotsman. So Black Bomb Bame is a more modern uh, like kind of hard rock, um, yeah, like hard rock type group. The guitar especially, there's a lot of like distortion, a lot of like kind of fuzz to the tone. Um, you get this very dark type sound to it. And then when you add Peter Brotsman, again, the free jazz kind of imp improvisation master, um, it fits so well. Most saxophone players are not going to be able to work with as kind of a rock group. Um, this is harder than what he did in the 80s with like Last Exit with like Sonny Chirac. Um, you get, um, again, a much more dark kind of hard rock type sound to it, but he holds his own on the saxophone and it's an amazing listen. This is from 2016. It was recorded in Portugal. Uh, this is a pretty tough album to find. Uh, I was able to find this on Discogs. This is actually the only copy that was on Discogs from the U.S. Uh, most of them are coming from Portugal. Again, that was kind of where it was released. But really great artwork to this as well. Kind of continues on the back as well. If you ever do see this, definitely worth picking up. Again, really walks the line between the hard rock and then like free jazz as well. So if you're interested in that type of music, that's definitely worth checking out. I, that's also available on uh, YouTube if you want to take a stream, uh, kind of listen to it before you purchase. So that's an awesome one. Last one, definitely a huge one. This one actually just came in the mail today. Um, I know it's kind of late being in December now, but included this. Uh, this is Machine Gun, Peter Brotsman Octet. Seminal free jazz, free improvisation record. This is when most people think of Peter Brotsman. This is the album that comes to mind amazing artwork to it as well very high energy very loud very just yeah just very edgy type music that was really the theme for a lot of peter brodsman's early releases uh you don't hear it as much on his first relief uh which was for adolf sax you hear it on this one you hear it on nipples you hear it on balls you hear it on some of those early kind of late 60s early 70s fmps and then he I wouldn't say he cooled off, but the sound becomes less edgy. Um, this also kind of, the sound, that kind of real edginess is exasperated by the fact that you've got a large lineup to it. So you've got Sven Johansson is on the drums. He also, in the kind of early 70s, would adopt playing the accordion as well. Kind of a bizarre thing, but you hear him a lot on a lot of FMP records. Peter Kowal talked about him not too long ago it's on the bass. William Broker is on tenor sax, Peter Brotsman tenor, baritone sax, Fred Van Hove piano, Evan Parker tenor sax, Bushi Nybergal on bass, and then Han Benek on the drums. Um, obviously, Peter Brotsman would then go on in the early 70s to work with especially Han Benek drums and uh, Fred Van Hove on the piano, um, but he would also kind of get together with this group again especially with the Globe Unity Orchestra ones. Um, so the group was not really too uh, kind of just mismatched. You've got a lot of these killer FMP musicians um, that are featured on here. Cool thing as well I noticed when I opened up the, the package was this came from a uh, distributor in uh, northern New York. Um, so north of Syracuse is considered northern New York. This came from Redwood uh, Redwood, New York, which is uh, not far from actually where I live. 
and um, so it's cool to have that kind of local piece. Um, when this came over in 1989, this is the third pressing of the FMP one. Technically, this would be like a fourth pressing if you included the original release on uh, uh, Peter Brodsman's label, uh, Bro. But um, this is kind of the third pressing on FMP, 1989. Uh, when this came over in 1989, um it was right here locally so it's awesome to see that i've actually seen that on the back back of a few releases i think it was a pretty uh extensive uh operation um that went with it so um really really happy to have found that one that one was a huge find i've ever since i've been collecting peter Bratzman since about uh, may of this year uh that one's always been on my radar of just waiting to find a copy and the right time came up i appreciate Mike uh, Jazz Bums for letting me know about the copy that showed up on Discogs. So thank you for that, uh, Mike. Um, that's it for this month. If you liked what you saw, please think about liking and subscribing. Uh, Christmas is a few weeks. Be going to Rochester. Hope to find some great stuff as well. Um, but uh, until then, again, thank you for the support. Uh, and I will see you in the next vinyl video. Bye.